Maggie will never forgive Negan for what he did, and rightfully so. Yeah. Glenn, may he rest in peace. Um, did you just say, well? Me? Yeah. I, did you just go, well? I'm gonna let you finish your question. <laughs> Hey, here we are at San Diego Comic-Con 2024. I'm Sam in the Den of Geek Studios with the cast and creative team behind The Walking Dead, Dead City. Check out season two in 2025 on AMC and check out season one on AMC+. Plus. So Lauren, you know, Herschel really cut Maggie deep by basically calling her out on her obsession over Negan. Darn it, that little kid can be right about his mom. <laughs> like, Aren't kids right? All the time, the, the innocence of a child. But well, they're yeah. honest. I don't think they're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you think that informs Maggie moving forward into season two? I think it informs her a very large amount, but maybe not enough until we get deeper into the season. Um, there's something sort of unhealed with my son and I, and as there is with Negan and I, and we we sort of peel back all the layers this year and I have to do it if I want a relationship with my kid, but it brings a lot of questions into focus about my relationship, both why I feel the, the rage and resentment towards him, what I haven't addressed after a, more than a decade of trauma as a survivor in the apocalypse and all that stuff gets, uh, it's all part of part and parcel. I feel like Negan can't help but develop kind of cults of personality around him or draw people to his cause, whether it be Alpha to her ill-fated end or, you know, of course, leading the saviors. Like, how is it playing, just being so gosh darn magnetically charismatic all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Jeff. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, it just comes supernatural. <laughs> I think that uh, Negan just has a way with people and he's good at reading people. And because of that, he's able to sometimes charm them, sometimes manipulate them. But I talk about this a lot, about Negan being a chess player and always kind of being a move or two ahead. But this season, I think we find him in a spot that he's never been in before. He's a lot more vulnerable and he's in a sticky situation. Sort of needing Maggie to come and save his ass, really. Um, does she? Probably not. Probably not. You're a little rough on Negan. <laughs> well, in terms of people finding like different elements of trust, I mean, Gaius, would you say that Pearly maybe has his guard up around New, Ber you know, New Babylon than, than he did more in the first season? Yeah, I mean, when I come back, you know, I tell this, this lie and try to, you know, save myself and save Negan. So season two kicks off with me trying to figure out my way through that. And through this season, I get to see another side of Negan, maybe the side that some of the OG uh, characters know. And it's pretty cool. I think the, the fans will like it. Zajilko, how is it like kind of like following the Daima and kind of finding new dimensions and nuances within that kind of complicated dynamic that, you know, that you have? Yeah, that's a really, uh, it's a big part of that season two um, story, because now that I've gotten pulled Negan back into the fold uh, and think I've gotten everything I want, uh, that dynamic actually shifts. Suddenly she seems to have a new favorite. So staying, <laughs> staying in her good graces um, is, is a big part of the journey for the, for the second season and watching that come together and watching that fall apart is really cool. And, and watching everybody have to shift shift their focus and shift their game as the as the season goes on um, is one of the cooler things to think about what Eli sort of reinvented this time around because um, every season seems to be like a whole new game and all the alliances get shifted around. Well let's talk about that reinvention because yeah Eli I mean anytime there's another season you get the chance to kind of remix the direction remix the cast I'm kind of like baffled that Kim Coates wasn't part of the Walking Dead universe before because he always feels like he could have been. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, he was yeah. kind of busy. <laughs> he, was doing, you know, he was doing yeah. Sons of Anarchy. But yeah, no, totally. I mean, it does feel like he, like, I don't know, as soon as he showed up, it was like, it felt like he should have been there all along. He's, uh, yeah, that, that, that was a lot of fun. Kim, Kim was, he brought a lot to the role and to the, to the season, and, and he's, a, he's an awesome, hilarious guy. Well, and the other thing is, how is it developing new ways to play with zombies? I mean, last season we saw zombie fuel, or Z-fuel, if you want to call it that. Um, like, how is it trying to, like, figure out what to do with the waves of undead in a dead city? 
Well, it's, I mean, look, it's, this show, this, <laughs> this thing's been going for a long time. There's a lot that's been done. Um, I don't know. Every time, I, I, every time we're doing a new season, I'm always like, man, what else can we do with the with the with the zombies? But there's always something, and I think having this new landscape, you know, New York, it just like constantly trying to think about like what's the intersection of this like urban jungle with like with zombies, you know, and what can we do and what new can come out of it? And um, I think we got some cool things to see. I think we got a lot, and and beyond zombie, you know, I mean, the, the show's not just zombies; it's people, and then. It's other things, you know, and so uh, it, it's it's always fun to play around with the with the pieces we got in the show. Absolutely. In terms of pieces, I mean, you guys have been exploring this. Like Maggie will never forgive Negan for what he did, and rightfully so. Yeah. Glenn, may he rest in peace. Um, did you just say well? Me? Yeah. I, did you just go well? I'm gonna let you finish your question. <laughs> I feel like I'm bearing the lead, but <laughs> but um. You know, how is it finding new colors to play that dynamic? I think that the thing this year and the thing in general is that there is a lot of unresolved stuff for everybody. And uh, there's some place for Maggie to put a lot of that anger. And it's not about whether or not she forgives Negan. It's about getting to know these characters now if you sort of like take away a vice almost and like what is the unraveling thing that they are so terrified of in themselves that letting go of a of a resentment might might threaten to reveal so i don't know if it's about forgiving negan but it's about some things might force you in a head-to-head -head battle with yourself and your your darkest the darkest part of your soul so you know something light Sure. Yeah, <laughs> as Walking Dead is wont to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Jeff, how about you? I mean, there was a scene where in the finale where he's like, you know, if we worked together, we probably could have rescued your son, but we right. didn't. Like, how is it finding it from your end and just kind of having a little more separation emotionally than Maggie might? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I think Negan's been on a path for a long time. People like to call it like this redemption arc. I'm not, I, I'm not sold on the redemption arc of it all. I, I think you're a certain way in this apocalyptic world and what you've done to survive. It's really hard for anybody to redeem themselves. But in Maggie's eyes, look, you, you started the question off to her saying she'll never be able to get over that. And I think that that is true. And I think that will remain true. Um, but can they figure out a way to coexist? And, and I think that we dive more into that this year. Um, but I think Negan's right. I think if they did join forces, I think that would be a powerful duo. Um, it's just that I don't know that they can. Wait till you see it, though. Wait till you see this season, for real. Well, in terms just of that... Wait. <laughs> no, no. Just wait. wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one more before I just wait for, you know, months. But, the, uh, you know, what else can you what else can you all tease either about the dynamic between Manhattan and New Babylon or like all the ins and outs of Dead City and these like warring factions for the what's left of old New York? I think we introduce a lot more of these groups in New York and we see more of the city itself this year, which is cool. But, you know, people like Kim, um, we've got a couple new cast members uh, that will bring in different corners of the city uh, and you will see what the battle that is going on and how the shift in power and, and what causes that shift, which is pretty interesting. Um, but it's, it's a, Manhattan's a big place, and we've only seen this much of it so far, so we've got a ways to go. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I would just second that. I mean, we're, we're going north, you know? Like, there's, there's, we're going to uncover more of Manhattan and what's happened and who's there and, like, everything Jeffrey's saying. I mean, one of the big things I, I always like to do and that I think we do more and more in this season is kind of mix it up a bit, you know? Like, intersect certain characters with other characters who haven't, known each other before and what comes out of those you know those confrontations or those alliances right on well again catch the walking dead dead city on amc in 2025 and while you're at it revisit walking dead dead city season one on amc plus along with all 11 seasons of the walking dead this is sam stone here at san diego comic-con 2024 y'all thanks for taking the time to speak with me today thank, thank you. you sam